Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Wednesday, September 26th. We had a nice reversal day today. Um, unexpectedly, uh, based on consumer confidence actually coming in the highest in seven months, market actually gapped up and um, right around 11, 1130, um, topped it for the day and started slowly grinding higher and kind of went sideways and then actually sold off towards the end of the day. So um, clear reversal day, large engulfing candle with some volume marked in distribution. And uh, we did do some technical damage. One day does not mark a trend. Um, so we're going to really need to see if we get some follow through for tomorrow. Um, usually a guess like this, we get uh, sometimes on these engulfing candles, we get a little bit of a dead cat bounce, take back 38 or 50 percent of that move. And then we start to roll again, taking out the low for today. Um, then that's something that's going to be uh, really, really interesting to see and some new developments. Now, I think the market's tired of been stating that that uh, downside risk is uh is imminent and um i would be very careful with your longs um if you're a long-term trader please hedge your portfolio if not take your profits and if you're swinging i wouldn't be swing trading right now at this moment i um, be looking for some really exceptional day trades and even then cash is a position on just until we, we we start rolling over you know topping is a process and um you know that's what's happening right now it looks like we're topping a little bit um things are getting frothy uh, I'll show you that in the indicators and um, you know uh, tomorrow uh, Today tomorrow. I like to see what happens. Don't forget guys We have in the end of the month window dressing end of the quarter window dressing So it'll be inter interesting to see what happens if the uh, large hedge funds and mutual fund managers are going to lock in their profits or they're going to hold the market up and dress their books up going into the fourth quarter so no one knows that except what the charts tell us and that's going to be price and price is what pays us and that's what we're going to be looking for today tomorrow and of course the coming days um, wouldn't be surprised if we do get a little bit of a bounce uh, in the short short term we are oversold but if you look at the uh, NIMO the McClellan oscillator we have plenty of room to really get deeply oversold so this market has plenty of legs to, uh, to the downside um, however again please I emphasize one day does not make a trend don't go out looking to uh, buy puts and positions unless you're hedging yourself for the moment because you have a bunch of long trades okay um, because this market can change immediately and as you know uh, world central banks when they see some sort of a uh, change what happens they start talking the market up so just use caution here there's gonna be plenty of opportunity in the fourth quarter and in the weeks to come that we can really really make a lot of money here so we just want to be patient make sure that a trend has changed that we've taken out some pivotal lows and then we can start selling rallies okay VIX take a look at the VIX I showed this to you several uh, uh, days ago actually sometime last week little inverted head and shoulders here slanted neckline and we did get an engulfing candle now the VIX is depressed basically it's uh, suppressed excuse me um, so there 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 is there's I should say a little lack of um, um, validity to it because I, I, I'm looking at the VIX and I'm saying, okay, well, you know, the VIX sh today should have been up a little bit more than what I see today. But nonetheless, um, it does, it, it can pick up and it does gauge risk and it does gauge complacency, right? I mean, if nobody's buying, um, nobody's buying insurance, that's where the, what's why the VIX is so low. But it's definitely something I would like to keep an eye on um, uh, in the coming days. Now, um, I always mention China, but before, excuse me, before that, let's take a look at the um, stocks above the 50-day moving average. We're, now we're finally rolling over. We're still, look it up here at lofty levels, 71%. We're just starting to roll over now, um, as you can see the S&P rolling over. So we, uh, this, this has a lot of room to run, just like the McClellan Oscillator, guys. So again, plenty of room to run to the downside, as you know. We'll get into the charts in a moment, but I want to show you um, SSEC, which is the Shanghai Composite. Um, really ugly looking chart. I don't think there's anything pretty about that. Even if it bounces, I think it's going to have a hard time. Uh, we we had um, uh, North Fork Southern come out, FedEx, and of course the rails got, got crushed last week, as you know. And they were clearly stated, hard commodities have slowed dramatically. Coal, copper, industrial metals, iron ore, I mean, you, you name it. They're not shipping it. And if that's the case, and I know, and there's a big argument out, oh, well, it's only 20 stocks in the index, and, uh, you know, three get downgraded, of course, they're going to have a bad day. Well, it it's also gauges the economy, and uh, it doesn't look good. Now, 
we trade what we see, but you cannot deny there's a warning sign here when you have the transportation sector looking like that, which I'll show you in a moment, as well as Shanghai, which are really, they, Shanghai, and I mentioned before, um, they rallied prior to our rally in 2009. They bottomed before us, and this does not look like any type of bottom or anytime soon. Now, what I'd like to do is let's, let, let's get together and look at the um, S&P. I always like to look at this before we get into that, and just to take a look at what's happening. Now, we are in an uptrend still, right? Okay, one day doesn't really make uh, make a trend change. However, you can see that little bit of that rolling top here, S&P versus the, ban uh, the banking sector. Had a great run, no denying it. Great run. Um, now I think that the um, um, S&P is going to be in a little bit of trouble, especially if the banks can't rally here, and especially after QE3 with a $40, $40 billion uh, mortgage-backed asset purchase program per month. Now, it is the smallest of the two, but I mean, it's I think it's the last QE of the year, and um, I just think that there's nothing more that they can really do if this market really becomes in trouble. I think you'll you'll get some mass dist distribution. Now, not trying to scare anybody, but just make sure you're aware and be prepared for that. Let's take a look at the SOX, semiconductors. Terrible day. Absolutely terrible, along with the S&P. Um, there are uh, actually been selling off for the last six, seven days, and uh, just, just an ugly-looking chart compared to the S&P. Let's take a look at the transports. Key. Okay, transports broke down to this key area, the long term, this lower trend line. And again, we had a big update yesterday. And look at the reversal tail to the top. Look at this engulfing candle. Not pretty. And this sector really tells what's happening here in, in our economy. So this is not good. I don't care if it was 20 or 15 stocks. If it's a, a, a bunch, a basket of rails and truckers, to me, and, and some airlines, throw some airlines in there, if you will. Um, I just think that there's a massive slowdown going, and um, again, this market's been fueled only by the Fed throwing throwing liquidity into the marketplace. So again, guys, just to see here, really, really um, big red flags out here. Now, the market could rally tomorrow, and that's fine. Um, I would love to see the market actually take back half of this candle and then actually produce another reversal candle and then take out this low of 1441 here, which we closed at the low. Then I could say you have a confirmation to the downside. We are starting to sell rallies. Okay. Now, um, spiders. And I mentioned, uh, uh, and I left this up here because I wanted to show everybody, pattern recognition, repetitive patterns. We had bull flags all over the place. What happened? They failed. And we, it did not trigger. So if you recall, that's why we say we always need a trigger. You find a pattern, you need the trigger. And the trigger would be a breakout of the upper trend line, and that would trigger that on a closing basis on a daily chart. That would be the trigger, and then you would get long the following day. However, what happened? It did not trigger. Uh, markets actually rolled over. And look at this large engulfing candle. And I'm showing you the spidey side because I want to show you the volume, how bad it is. And then a lot of these ETFs. And we're starting to roll over. Again, though, it is healthy. Markets just can't just uh, rally this hard. But are we in the early stages of a top? I think so. It does look like that. Um, I'm not putting my money where my mouth is, meaning that I'm not um, looking to go out and short the market in short positions. Um, I will be selective until I get confirmation. And we're sitting on the 20 already, so again, a bit oversold. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we actually bounce a little bit. Okay, moving on. Take a look at our 30-minute chart. And, uh, and I left this here to show you just like a big bull flag. Lots of support here, though. See? We're into this support area, 143.68, 144, 20, 30. Lots of support here, guys. And you can see our volume profiles. Nothing in here. And sure enough, as soon as we broke that, this area here, and let me just show you. This is why volume um, analysis is actually really important. Um, we broke this area here. Look what happened. We just sold off. And uh, really not looking too good. But we are in support, so we are due for a little bit of a bounce here. Okay, um, 60 minute, oh, sorry about that, but I did throw a Fibonacci retracement on here, and you can see in this area how, how um, low the volume profiles are. Now, I really look at the volume profiles and volume analysis more on a daily chart, but a 60 minute chart would do just as well. Um, look at our, I put our Fibonacci up here, so we already broke the 38%, so 50% is going to be right around the one, uh, four, let's call it 1435 area in the cash. Okay, so, but look, you can see that we're already oversold in a 60-minute chart already. So, do for a bounce? Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if we do bounce tomorrow. Russell, gauges risk, failed bull flag, big, big, big engulfing red candle. Definitely took it on the chin today. And look at that volume. And if you bring up the other charts on the spiders, you'd see um, that the volume here, look at the difference from here 
to here. Massive, massive volume. Risk off. No question about it. And this is a gauge of risk. So when it's selling risk and risk comes off, you're going to get risk off in the, in the commodity currency pairs, the high-yielding pairs, and you're going to get risk off on these higher beta names as well as the small caps because it's, a, it's a, just a form of risk that people are willing to take to get higher yield. Okay, so next, transportation, IYT. Just a terrible-looking chart. Took almost all of that uh, engulfing uh, a green candle. So not looking too pretty. I've been say, stating that back in uh, early September, I think, and even here in August. Um, not looking pretty. That's not what I want to see if I'm, really, if I'm really sure that, look, or at least comfortable that we're going to actually move higher. Apple. Had a bunch of emails the other day. Oh, what do you think about Apple? I can definitely give analysis. I really don't trade it. An occasional buy, buy a call or a put. Um, I did. I did not like Apple. I did not like Apple when it was trading at 715. Um, when you get these little indecision candles, and they start moving up like this, and they're outside the band, you're overbought. There's no question about it. So there's no sense of chasing Apple when you can get it 60, 70 points lower. And Apple has a little bit more room to run. I think you're looking at your first target's going to be this 50-day moving average, which coincides nicely with this upper here, this little tag right here, and this little support zone. So 645, call it. That'll be your first area. 645, 646 would be your first buy-in area, at least to leg in. Other than that, I'd stay away. I, I'm not, um, not a big Apple fan. Um, and, and if you're looking at trend analysis, guys, um, and that's even news, news trends can actually give you an idea of what's happening. The last several days, news trends in Apple was terrible. Okay, terrible. I've also found an article today um, that um, uh, some, some um, newspaper said, it, is Apple skewing their numbers? So, who knows? But it's not, when you get, when you get, number, when you get figures like that, and when you get um, um, uh, trending, uh, news trending analysis to the opposite way, Pete, there's no, there's no way that obviously people would be looking to buy. Now, what happens here is this: they look to buy the stock here on pullbacks, right? Because what, what happened? They were rewarded all up here. So what happens when, when all of these guys bought here? They're out here now, right? So if you go bring this chart up here, your next pivotal low is going to be 655. A break of 655, you're going to see 10 points lower, 645, and then you'll reevaluate. But if you look at these pivotal lows, this is where you're going to have a lot of these high retailers, these retail traders, up in here buying this area, they're already getting out up here. These guys have gotten out from this pivot. And now the next pivot is going to be the next pivotal low, 655. Real easy to tell where your stops are. And then when you look at it in a level 2 system, you'll see as price starts to break that area, you'll see the offering side fill in dramatically. So just a little quick little tip, and that's exactly what we teach as well. Okay, guys, uh, two more. I'm going to let you guys go. Look at the SMH. Horrible, horrible day today. All right, now we're oversold a little bit in the SMH already on the daily chart, but just really horrible looking chart. Um, I'd be looking to look to sell any bounces in the in the uh, semiconductors. Okay, as of right now, I would be looking to sell. Not right now. We're oversold, so a two or three day bounce and a, and a clear reversal candle. Then I'd be looking to, looking for a sell side, look a sell setup in that. Again, Q's highly weighted with Apple. Um, Apple didn't help, broke the 20-day, but look what happened. Right to the penny at our um, um, support area. So, guys, that's it. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Don't forget, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a little bit of a bounce um, tomorrow or even, in, even into the end of the week. Uh, but I, one day does not make a trend, so please, please use caution. And let's see where we go from here. But um, if we do get a couple of down days... Um, closing on a closing basis, taking out pivotal lows, I think we can get a confirmation that we can start selling rallies. We are too early, though, for that. We'll see what happens in the coming days. And remember, guys, end of the quarter and end of the month window dressing, so be prepared for that. Have a great day, everybody.